Welcome to Nexus Medical Media. If this is your first time, thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we are going to have an overview of systemic fungal infections. We are going to talk about uh, the three main infections. Histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiodomycosis. Right, so uh, after having a general overview, we will have other individual uh, videos talking about the, uh, the aforementioned uh, fungal infection. Right, so I hope this video will be helpful uh, and I hope you watch till the end so that you grasp all the concepts that you may ever need in the mycology field. So let's begin. Three fungi that cause systemic disease in humans are Histoplasma capsulatum, Blastomyces dematides, Coccidioides emetes. Right, so the list is long, but I'm going to talk about these three because they are very important and you can't afford to miss them. All systemic fungal infections are caused by the dimorphic fungi, which are molds at 20 degrees Celsius and yeast at 37 degrees Celsius. So you can remember this. Cold mold, 20 degrees. Heat, yeast, 37 degrees. Right. So there is only one exception. Coccidiodomycosis. Right. So this one is actually a spheral, not a yeast. Right. It's a spheral that is found in tissue. It doesn't form a yeast. This dimorphism play a part in human infection. Their natural habitat is the soil, right? So in that uh, in soil they grow as mycelia and they are released as spores into the air, and these spores are inhaled by humans uh, at the human temperature of thirty seven degrees Celsius, right? So they grow as yeasts. So you can see uh, like a different organs mainly affected by the systemic fungal infection, the brain, lungs, heart, liver, etc. Let's look at the mechanism of the disease. Right. So these three fungi will cause three clinical presentations. The first one is asymptomatic. The majority of cases are asymptomatic or mild respiratory illnesses that go unreported. The second one is pneumonia, right? So they cause a mild pneumonia that can develop with fever, cough, and chest x-ray infiltrates. Like tuberculosis, granulomas with calcifications can follow resolution of the pneumonia. A small percentage of persons will develop severe pneumonia and an even smaller group will progress to a chronic cavitary pneumonia marked by weight loss, night sweats, and low-grade fever, much like a chronic tuberculosis pneumonia. The third presentation is dissemination. Right? So in disseminated form, uh, this one occurs rarely. Right? So the hematogeneously spread fungi can naturally cause disseminated diseases such as meningitis, bone lytic granulomas, skin granulomas that break down into ulcers and other organ lesions. Right. This disseminated form commonly occur in those who are immunocompromised. Right. So we will have another uh, series of videos on opportunistic fungal infection. Right. So just to remember them, those are the ones we will be talking about. Candida aspergillus. Right. So you can click the link on the top right corner to watch the first one, Candida. So in general, how do you diagnose these three bugs? Right. So all three are best diagnosed by obtaining a biopsy. Of the infected tissue tissue remember right so you can uh, do a bronchoscopic biopsy of uh, lung lesions uh, skin biopsy etc the tissue can be examined with silver stain for yeast or can be grown on subarrowed agar or blood agar 
right so just remember tissue is the issue tissue is the issue tissue biopsy right so skin tests are not very helpful for diagnosis as many people have been previously exposed asymptomatically and will have a positive test anyway right so how do you best do this all right serologic tests can be helpful uh, thus complement fixation uh, latex agglutination a urine histoplasma antigen test is also used to assist with diagnosis for the first one for histoplasmosis for management acute pulmonary histoplasmosis and coccidiodomycosis usually require no treatment as the infection is mild for chronic or disseminated disease itraconazole or amphotericin b is, are often uh, required for months all blastomycosis infections or require aggressive amphotericin b or itraconazole treatment so we're going to have separate videos on histoplasmosis blastomycosis and coccidiodomycosis so right check out the next video on histoplasmosis thank you